All right, so day two of matrices. Our learning goal is we want to be able to find something called the determinant of the matrix. So we're going to be looking at the determinants of two by two matrices and three by three matrices. The reason that we learn about these determinants is because they're used to find inverses. And then the inverses can be used to solve those very difficult systems that I talked about before. So the determinant of a square matrix is denoted by this. It looks like an absolute value symbol, but that's not what it means. It's not absolute value. It's used to say, find this value of the determinant. And like I told you a minute ago, this is used for many different things. We have to know the determinant to find the inverse, and we have to know the inverse to solve systems. And like I said, a system can be very complicated. I could have um, m plus x plus y plus z equals 10. And if I have four variables, I would need to have four equations to be able to solve it. If I only had three variables, I'd have to have three equations. So you can see how complicated it would be to come up with m, x, y, and z that would meet the requirements for four different equations. That would be really complicated. So that's why we have to know about determinants. So we're going to start off with the basic determinant, a 2 by 2. And to find the determinant, here's what the rule is. This means determinant. We have to do a times d minus c times b. So all we do is we multiply these two minus, and then we sub, uh, get the answer to this product, and we subtract those two. So doing example one here, I would have to do negative four times negative six minus, and then going back this way, I get negative five times negative two. So this is going to be 24 minus and this is going to be 10, and so I get 14 is the determinant right there. Okay, so I'll do one more here. So to find this determinant, what are we going to do? Get what? What do we get? Everyone, 4 minus 6, so this determinant would be negative 2. This is the kind of problem that's on the ACTs a lot, where they give you a determinant. And the reason I know it's a determinant is because it looks like absolute value. So to do this, I would have to say I've got negative 2x minus what? Negative 12, which if it's minus negative 12, it would become plus 12. And that has to be equal to 10. So we're trying to figure out what does this x value need to be in order to make this equation true. Again, we did negative 2 times x minus negative 12. So solving this, I get negative 2x equals negative 2, and therefore x would have to equal 1. So if x was 1, then that would be the answer uh, when the determinant would be 10. All right, so now what about if we have a 3 by 3 matrix? Well, that makes things a lot more complicated. Finding the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix, we have to do expansion by diagonals. What happens is, in this one, we just go here and here, and we've touched every number. We've worked with every number. But to find this determinant, if I go along this diagonal and go along this, I've left out those other four numbers. So to take care of that, we have to write down the first two columns again. So I write my first column right here. Now I write my second column here. So I had to rewrite my first two columns. Then I have to multiply across the three diagonals going from left to right. So I go through this diagonal. What do I get if I multiply all of those numbers? 9 plus, I have to go through this diagonal. What do we get? 32. I have to go along this diagonal. What do we get? So I get that answer. Then it says multiply across the three diagonals going from right to left. So going from the right to the left, 
I'm going to have those diagonals. So I'm going to have to go this way. What does that give us? Negative 12. What do I get when I multiply those? Negative 36. What do we get when we multiply those? 8. So here's from where we go from left to right. Here's what we get when we go from right to left. So then it says to subtract the result of step 3, which was this, from the result of step 2, that. So I had to do all of these minus what I get when I go this direction. So this is going to be 41 and 12. 41 and 12 is 53. This is going to be negative 48 plus 8. That's going to be negative 40. Is that right? Negative 48 plus 8. Yeah, negative 40. And so now I'm going to have 53 plus 40, and that's going to give me 93. All right, now let's say we don't feel real confident that we did that correctly. Well, there's good news. Our calculator can find a determinant. Turn your calculator on. Clear your home screen. Go to Matrix. Go over to Edit. This matrix that we were given was a 3 by 3. Put in the numbers. 3, 2, 2. Negative 2, 1, 4, 4, negative 3, 3. Once you have the matrix put in, let's quit. So we do second mode to get out of the matrix. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to matrix, and I have to go over to math. And that's where determinant is located. So I'm telling it to find the determinant, and I have to tell it what to find the determinant of. So I go back to matrix, and I say of matrix A, enter. And it tells me that answer is 93. Okay? So the calculator can do this for us, but what I'm going to ask you to do is on the odds, you do them like this without using the matrix function on the calculator, and then the evens, I'll let you use the calculator on. Yep. Well, we really did use those because we used them right here, the negative 2 and 1. Oh, okay. Yeah. So see, every number had to get used um, basically twice, and they did because you might think, well, the 3 only got used once, but it got used there too, so it was used twice. So that's how it works. All right, so let's do this one. So first of all, I have to write the first two columns. If you understand it, you can go on your own. If not, then watch. So what I have to do is I have to multiply along this diagonal. That's going to give me um, 60. Multiply along this diagonal. Got to love when you have zeros because that's zero. Another zero. And then minus, and then I got to go backwards. There's a zero. There's a zero. And there's a zero. Oh, that makes it easy, doesn't it? We like it if we have to multiply by zero because we know it's going to be zero. So anytime there's a zero in that diagonal, it's just zero, and that's going to be 60. We don't even need to get out our calculator and check that one, right? Pretty easy. All right, go to the back. Okay, so this one's not going to be as easy because we don't see any zeros in here, do we? So we're going to go forward, I get negative 8, forward, I get 5, that's going to be 18, negative. Then when I go backwards, I'm going to get 3, I'm going to get 4, and I'm going to get 60. So that's going to give me, what, negative 3? Minus 18 is negative 21. Minus, and that's going to be 67. So that should be negative 88. 
Let me show you something else cool I can do with this. I can go back to my matrix and edit two, oops, shoot, three by three again. So I got two, one, three. Just kind of watch here. I just want to show you something. Okay, so I have it in. I have to quit. Now, I don't really have to even go and find determinant again because the last thing I did was found the determinant of A. So if I hit second, enter, my calculator will now do the determinant of A. That's the last thing I did. And it'll use that new A that I put in there. So when I hit enter, it tells me it's negative 88. So that can save me some time. Okay? But if you needed to, remember you go to matrix, you go to math, and that's where the determinant's located. All right? Okay, so next, finding inverses. And we do need to be able to find an inverse because that allows us to solve those complicated systems I said we could have. We could have, you know, the four equa or the four variables and the four equations. And those can be solved with inverses. We want to be able to find a two by two inverse by hand. Here's what we have to do. We find the determinant. So I do A times D minus B times C. That's going to be my determinant. The determinant's not allowed to be zero. And then what I have to do is I have to switch the A and D and I have to change the signs on B and C. So in other words, it says switch A and D, so switch these two. Ooh, typo. Switch the signs on B and C is what that should say right there. Change that to B and C. Then divide each entry by the determinant of matrix A. All right, so let's see if we can follow this. So to find this determinant, the first thing I have to, or inverse rather, I need to find the determinant first. So I'm going to have to do 1 times 2 minus 3 times negative 1. So I'm going to get 2 minus negative 3. So the determinant is 5. Once I have the determinant, that's going to help me to find the inverse. So to find the inverse, going back up here, it says A and D are going to switch. So this goes here, and this goes here, and then I have to change the signs on B, oops, yeah, and C. So I switch these two, change the signs here, and now I divide through by my determinant. So everything gets divided by that determinant. And that would be our inverse right there. Okay, so let's say you're taking your final exam and it asks you to find the inverse and you forget how to do it like that. Well, go to matrix, go over to edit. Our original matrix is a two by two matrix. Put it in one, three, negative one, two, quit, second mode to quit, make sure you have a clear home screen, then go back to matrix and get matrix A, and to find the inverse, this is the inverse key, x to the negative one. See how up here it says A to the negative one? That means inverse, so we have to do A and then we push that X to the negative one button, push enter, gives us this answer. I have mine in fraction form, so I'm just gonna go to math, frac, and there we go. Two fifths, negative three fifths, so we did it correctly. Okay, questions? All right, let's do the next one. Everybody find the determinant on your own, first of all. Ben, what'd you get for the determinant? Negative one is the determinant. What do we do next? Okay. Good. So switch these two, change those signs. And what do we do last? Evan? 
All right, so I divide everything by negative 1. So negative 1 divided by negative 1, that's going to change all of our signs. And so that would be the inverse. All right, let's do letter C just on our calculator. Go to your matrix. Over to edit. Back to matrix, get it, and then do x to the negative 1. So what happened? It says error. Yeah. Excellent. If you look at this determinant, 20 minus 20 gives us 0. If the determinant is 0, that means that there is no inverse. And that's because we're not allowed to divide through by 0. So that would be why we don't have an inverse on that one. Okay? Pretty easy, right? Not too bad. So on Monday, we'll talk about like how we can actually apply these inverses and how they can help us to solve systems of equations.